Hi, good day, and welcome to Farming Life Australia. Today, I thought I'd make a video about my sawmill and things I've learnt since I've owned it. It's taught me a lot, and I just thought I'd share with you some of the things, mistakes, and improvements, and just generally things to look out for that I've found out about since owning my mill. The other thing I will say right up front is. I didn't have a lot of experience with swing mills before I bought this mill. I'd only had some experience as a helper with a well-known Australian brand of mill. I'd seen them at shows. I'd never seen one of these in real life. But after helping with the double rail mill for a couple of weeks, I decided it was just not for me. When I haven't used the mill for a while, I just like to make sure that the main beam is in alignment with the backstop that I use for my logs. If you look at that main beam and then down to the ground, you'll see there's a bit of 4B3 screwed on to use as a backstop for the logs. And it's important to me that that's parallel so that when I cut through the log, I'm not cutting a huge amount one end and it's wind up with all tapered pieces of wood. You can see here I've moved the log over with the crowbar and the log's not parallel to the backstop so I'm going to have to do something about that. These wedges I'm putting in here are not going to hold the log down while I'm cutting. They're only there to get the log positioned and then I'll put the log dogs on that I've made my own design. I've almost got this log completely hard up against the backstop and I will say this they're not always this hard it's just that the balance of this logs trying to roll it away from the backstop. With no rail extensions 4.2 meters long is as long as this mill can cut so what I like to do is just check that through its operation it works properly and that the muffler won't hit when it comes down lower because it will hit on that bracket there if the log is not placed correctly. Periodically I like to lubricate all the chains on the mill and all the points where it rubs up and down on the box channel. This is just canola oil, cooking oil, cheap just you know home brand or something like that, Coles I think. But um, I don't use that all the time. A lot of the time I use chain bar oil because it's very sticky and it stays on and doesn't wash off if it rains and you happen to get a bit of rain on your mill. I don't grease the grease points every time I use the mill. Probably about every 20 hours or so of operation. The other thing I like to do fairly often is keep the blade sharp. And here I'm just using the sharpener that's supplied with the mill. It's not great. It works okay, like there's nothing wrong with it. It's adequate, but that's all. The other thing you have to do, other than put petrol in the machine and check the oil, etc., is to fill up the water tank that cools the blade. I run a little bit of soluble oil in mine as well, only a little bit, but I do run a bit in it. This is the dogs that I've made to hold the logs down and you can see they've got a step in them and the piece at the front the round piece up here that's what goes into the log and it's designed to be the same shape as the end of the chainsaw bar and if the blade comes along there where my hand is and touches that or cuts into it it won't destroy the tungsten on the blade and the mounting screws, there's a good two inches difference in the height of the mounting screws and where that goes into the log. So you've really got to do something absolutely crazy to hit the screws, which are high tensile and will wreck the blade. So you can see here, when I get my big fat hand out of the road, that it's pretty much the shape of the end of the chainsaw blade. I guess it works a little bit like a biscuit in a, and a biscuit joiner and that's been very successful for me. Well 
what I'm doing here is cutting a slot for the log dog to go in. Unfortunately, I should have thought a bit more about it. Camera angle, instead of seeing me back and ass, you would have been able to see what I'm doing. I'm only using self-drilling metal screws for roofing, for metal roofing, not for to go into timber. And they don't grip very well into the wood. They're adequate, or well, they grip well and truly good enough, but I find they don't bind in there so that I can't get them out like better screws would. Or screws designed to hold in timber is what I really mean. I've finished all my preparation now and I'm ready to saw. And it probably seemed a pretty long winded sort of an exercise but it's really not. When I'm sawing all the time, like the next log I do be a lot quicker obviously. I've given the saw a really good look over and it has been a bit of a difficult log this one too. So don't get the impression it's a big job, it's really not. You'll notice now that I've got long pants on and long sleeve shirt and safety hat and earmuffs and big boots and eye protection. And the reason I've changed is because I'm now going to get serious and saw the log and you do need protective gear. More than anything just to protect yourself from sawdust etc. So what I'm doing here is I'm just running along and seeing a bit of a height, getting a bit of an idea where I've got to cut, what I've got to do. And I've just put a line on the log. Here I'm just going to move the mill over towards the right hand side of your screen and reset the stop. And I'll do a cut and that'll... Um, be the first cut for the log and it, you can see that this log is fairly tapered so it cuts a bigger piece off the fat end than it does the other end but that's all right it'll get leveled up in a little while and it'll all be good the off cuts go straight into the firewood cutting rack which is conveniently placed straight at the end at an angle to the log so they can just come straight off the rubbish pieces and go into that rack. For efficiency and safety it's important to have your site clear and well organised otherwise you're inefficient and if you have crap on the ground and stuff laying around you're likely to trip over it and a lot of the time if you look here I'm looking back at the saw not where I'm walking so it is important to make sure that keep your site clean as you go. Don't let stuff build up around your feet. Another thing to take into consideration when you're setting up your sawmill is which way the wind blows. Now I've set mine up so that the wind blows from the right hand side of your screen to the left most of the time. There's nothing worse than having a wind and you're cutting into it and all the or just off center of where you're cutting and it's blowing all the dust straight in your face all the time it's bloody horrible when you're first making your initial cuts into your log you'll often get some pieces that are a bit odd shaped but quite often out of them like here we're trying to cut four inch by two inch or 100 mil by 50 mil and quite often you'll get pieces out of it if you go through that initial stuff that are actually okay to use you know like for noggins in building or something shorter pieces so we don't just throw them all away those pieces of your first initial cuts like you can see here we've just started to get proper 
four by twos now and we're stacking them up on the loader again the loader's placed strategically so it's all really easy to do no buggerising around and the reason I'm helping lift these is not because it's difficult it's because they're heavy they're a bit they're too heavy for my wife by herself and they're probably too heavy for me by myself Here we've cut down and we've cut a layer of four, two layers of 4B2s off and I'm just having a look at the log you can see here we've got a good pile of timber that probably probably took 15 minutes to saw that up and here's the rack that we've got for cutting the firewood and you can see that it all just lays in there all the rubbish and I cut the ends off first and then I cut in between each one of those uprights and that gives me pieces for the fire here it is from another angle and you can see the wood just comes off the saw and straight into the rack gets cut up and taken up for the fire here I've drawn a rough drawing of my saw blade and the direction of rotation and that bottom arrow is direction that you push the blade in other words, you're pushing against the rotation. If you're going the other way, you're doing a climbing cut. And the problem with that is that it's trying to pull the saw into the workpiece all the time. Now, I'm not saying you absolutely can't do climbing cuts, but I don't like them. The saw tries to overpower you. So I always like to cut in the opposite direction of the direction of rotation of the blade. Another thing I've learned, this is when I'm adjusting the height of the mill, is to use battery drills on the gearbox on the top that actually does the work. It's a lot easier on you and um, it's a lot better. The mill comes with handles. That's the last of the 4B2s cut out of this log. And um, I'm about buggered. It doesn't take long, but for me getting on a bit, it's uh, a bit much. I need to automate the mill. Here I'm just removing me log dogs. And as you can see, it's a very simple procedure. There's no effort involved in taking them out or putting them in much. Now I have to decide what to do with the rest of it and in this case I'm going to cut a live edge board out of it to use for something like a tabletop or something like that, a cupboard top or something. Here I'm putting a couple of screws in the log right down near the very bottom as close as I can to the bottom of the log and still hold it taken into account that the sapwood's crap and um, it's probably the head of that screw is no more than half an inch above the baseline so I'm going to cut a two inch board off it or inch and three quarter actually I want to wind up with inch and a half so that those screws will be a good inch below where I'm going to cut now I'm just going to cut the top off this log which was the underside and I'm going to do it in small pieces because the logs not as very as well supported as it was because I've cut most of the log away and it's a lot lighter and floppier so here's the finished live edge board looks nice I'll put that through the thickness of now thanks a lot for watching this edition of Farming Life Australia we'll catch you next time